hi everybody, it's Stu, AG6AG. You know, we're having a bunch of really neat technology popping up out here in uh, my little county, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about that technology and talk about the ways it's being deployed and some concerns that I have. Uh, and what I really want to know is if you have the same concerns, if you think I'm being, oh, uh, a nervous Nelly, I would really want your opinion on this stuff. So we're going to talk about a few different things. But before we get into it, I want to remind you, please click on the subscribe button down below so you get notified when I come out with new videos. And uh, if you like this video, give me a like. And of course, you know what? I'm trying to start a conversation here, so I'd really like you to leave comments about what your opinion is about the subject matter I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to talk about four different technologies, okay? I want to talk about packet BBSs. I want to talk about Winlink gateways. I want to talk about crossband repeaters. And I want to talk about Echo Link gateways. So let's start with packet. Now I run a couple packet stations. I run a packet BBS. Uh, I run it on 220. It runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, I have uh, ways of shutting it off if it goes crazy remotely. Uh, and it is operating in uh, my house, and it is local, so most folks would uh, would know if it was me if it went nuts. Um, but I do have the ability to shut it off regardless of where I am. Uh, I also have a packet-based RMS gateway, which is a gateway for Winlink. Okay, yeah, Winlink is an amazing thing. I... Uh, I really think that it has a lot of potential in a disaster in getting health and welfare information out to people, um, you know, and certainly a lot faster than um, the uh, network traffic system. Uh, but, again, you have to have something that's up 24 hours a day, that's connected to a radio 24 hours a day, that's connected to the Internet 24 hours a day, and any time you have a device that runs all the time, uh, you have to be cautious that it doesn't go nuts, such as key the radio. Uh, so, in the same fashion, I have the ability to shut this equipment, interrupt power from this equipment remotely, um, you know, regardless of my location. Um, now, I want to clarify something. It's fairly rare that you have a key lock up on one of these. Um, and... Uh, you know, since it uh, it's a packet, they're both packet stations, they actually are connecting on a simplex frequency. And uh, if there was interference on a particular simplex frequency and it was an actual emergency, uh, we certainly could go 20K up or 20K down for our packet communications by changing that uh, in the uh, PBBSs that we have in the EOCs, which could easily co be coordinated via voice. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not a showstopper for us in an emergency if one of these devices that I have actually goes to full key and locks up that one simplex frequency. I certainly don't want that to happen, and that's why I put in some fail-safes. But if for whatever reason, in a real disaster, I can't power this stuff off and it's just sitting there keyed up, uh, you know, and I can't get someplace to cut the coax, uh, guess what? Uh, I'm not taking down an entire emergency communications infrastructure. Also, you know, I'm not taking down a repeater system that may be used for primary communications for a lot of people during just a minor emergency, such as a large-scale power outage or a uh, internet failure. Uh, so, again, those two particular technologies, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about bringing down an entire community. Um, now, crossband repeaters? Yeah, that's a little bit of a different subject. 
Crossband repeaters, by the way, are very cool. And I have a couple set up. Okay. Now, I use a crossband repeater under the um, concept of an auxiliary station. Okay. Which means that there is a control operator close enough to this radio to shut it off if something goes wrong. Number one. Number two, I don't fire these things off and just leave them run, okay? I turn them on when I am specifically using them because I need them, and I turn them off when I'm not. I never turn one on and leave, you know, one on at the house and leave and go someplace. Never, ever, ever, okay? Um, you know, my biggest fear is I'm, I'm using that crossband to get me onto a repeater from an HT, all right, under normal circumstances where the HT wouldn't have a good signal into the repeater. Um, I don't want to tie or break that repeater system, okay? So I never, ever, ever leave it on. Now, I happen to know that there are a couple crossband repeaters in town that are on 24-7, uh, however, you know, they're going from 440 to 2 meters, simplex to simplex. There's no repeaters involved. So I will go back to the rule, even though I believe that a repeater needs to have some sort of out-of-band control, uh, that if, for whatever reason, something went critically wrong with the repeater, um, that it would not take out communications or emergency communications uh, or repeater communications for an entire community. Uh, but if you're tying into a repeater with a crossband, my opinion is you shouldn't have it on unless you're using it, and you should never use it unless you're really close to it and plan to stay close to it to where you can get to it to shut it off. Uh, and that's just, that's my, my belief, okay? Um, along the same lines... There's Echolink gateways out there that use a radio to tie into a repeater system. Now, Echolink, the concept of having an Echolink gateway that takes Echolink into radio and then takes radio back into Echolink would be to hook that to a community repeater itself and have that managed by the repeater owners or the trustees of that repeater. What that allows for is in the event of a problem, the repeater owner could sever the connection with Echolink, right? Well, what could go wrong with Echolink? Well, uh, you could have someone jump on an Echolink channel and uh, break transmission rules on that Echolink channel, break the FCC rules for the type of traffic and everything else, and it is uh, the repeater oper operator's responsibility to stop that. So if it's a echo link conversation coming from a radio that's remote, remote someplace else, okay, that someone decided to put up an echo link gateway. The repeater operator, by law, is required to bring that repeater down, okay? If, he, if, if it is doing it, the conversation or the traffic on that repeater is not legal traffic for amateur radio, it is his duty to shut the repeater off, okay? Um, now, what does that mean for a community? Well, it means that the entire community is offline on that repeater. Now, here in the Canal Valley where I live, we've got two repeaters, so that's pretty cool. But, again, you know, uh, if that Echolink gateway is on and the person that's running it isn't sitting next to it at the time to be able to push that button in case there is a problem with the traffic, then... The repeater operator has to bring down his entire system because of that echo link system. Another scenario where that could be a problem, if it's just sitting there running, if it's not managed all the time by someone, um, some, uh, uh, someone could get on that particular uh, channel that's being gatewayed into the repeater, and, hey, they could be tying up the channel during a period of time where there is a power outage or a communications outage and that repeater is being used by the community to communicate during that period of time. 
So, well, what's the real answer there? Well, the real answer is that if you have a Echolink repeater, okay, um, first off, I would certainly want to get permission from the owner of the repeater if you're going to gateway to his repeater. Um, secondly, I would make sure that not only do I have out of band through the internet, but I have out of band to turn the thing off through a radio connection uh, so I can pull the plug on it no matter where I am. Because let's face it, if uh, you go to work and it's on and it malfunctions, you know, and you work hour and a half away, an hour away, that's not common out here in Southern California, um, you know, how long are you going to tie that repeater up? In the event of a disaster, what happens if the radio keys and stays keyed and locks up the repeater? Well, you have to have the ability to shut it off, okay? That may be difficult if you're trapped outside your house. So, my opinion is if you want to do a echo leak repeater and tie it into a repeater itself, uh, and you're not tying it directly into the back of the repeater, if you're trying to repeat out of your radio into a repeater, uh, my opinion at this point would be, hey, you have got to figure out how to remote control that, make sure it's always able to be shut off regardless of whether you're home or not, uh, you probably should obey the same rules as a repeater operator has to, such as trustees, so there are multiple people that can bring that system down. That means physical access to the device as well. So if you're out of town, these have to be people that you trust with your house key. Um, and the reason being is you can really knock down an entire community's emergency or subsidiary communication system. Um, anyway, um, now, you know, if you run echo link to a simplex frequency, so you can use a simplex frequency and you can talk into the echo link network and then jump to a repeater someplace else, that's cool. That's absolutely acceptable. Uh, and again, it kind of falls under the same thing that we talk about with packet. You know, if it messes up, well, you're polluting a simplex frequency. We lost one. We lost a small section of the band, but we haven't lost an entire repeater. Okay. Anyway, you know, these are my opinions. I'm heavily vested in MCOMs, and I, my, in my daytime job, as it were, I am a specialist in uh, business continuity for data uh, access and storage systems. I understand what can go wrong. I understand what the best laid plans of mice and men, when they go wrong, what happens. Um, but am I being overzealous with this crossband repeating and echo link stuff. Uh, am I not being zealous enough about uh, the packet BBSs and the Winlink uh, gateways? Uh, am I missing something there that I should be thinking about? Because let's face it, you know, uh, you try to think of every scenario. There's an old saying, if you make something completely idiot proof, somebody goes out and they change the complete idiot. Uh, so I really want feedback from everybody. Please make, make polite comments down below to me or voice your opinion. Uh, just make sure they're polite. And uh, please, uh, you know, feel free to discuss this in the comments below. I really want other people's opinion because, let's face it, uh, this is getting to be more and more popular, uh, tying, you know, uh, Internet things into radio things and everything else. Uh, and we have a lot of people that are setting up their little individual products and playing with it and leaving them running. And you know what? There are dragons be there. So, again, let me know in the comments, all right? Anyway, I'm not trying to rant, but I'm ranting, right? 
This is Stu, A-G-6-A-G. Hey, and please subscribe. Uh, I know I say it a million times, but every subscription really helps me. It brings me uh, in front of more people. And uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate everybody that uh, watches these things. Um, again, this is Stu, A-G-6-A-G, and uh, hope to hear you on the air.